Welcome to the Pulse of the Heartland podcast, the podcast where no topic is off limits. Now welcome the boys of the Heartland, Bryant, Ryan, Clark, Joey, and Trent. If you've ever kicked around the idea of starting a podcast like the boys of the Heartland, we all recommend Anchor by Spotify. It is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. So novice podcasters like the boys of the Heartland can jump right in. Anchor has all the tools that allow you to edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to the Pulse of the Heartland podcast episode nine. This is the fun cast. We get a little lighthearted. We shoot from the hip. We hit a lot more topics here, not just football. We will stop, talk a little bit of football here, but uh, um, we're going to try to hit a few more things. Um, but again, let us know what you like. Uh, slide to the DMs on Instagram, on Twitter. Joey, what are the socials? So Instagram and Twitter are both at Heartland. And then on Facebook, we are on Pulse of the Heartland. All right. Well, uh, Uncle Joe, what are you drinking? I am still sipping on the vodka tonics. I just rolled with it. Finished up my uh, Tavern Keep $10 for a Texas Fifth vodka, and it mixes well with everything. Nice. All right. Homer Bryant, what are you drinking? Uh, repping a little uh, Boulevard Brewing out of Kansas City. It's a tip your cap baseball beer. I don't know how it's different than any other beer, but it had, like I said, baseball bats on it. So we'll give her a shot. <laughs> Bryant going with the theme of still going with that. What's on the can? Pictures yet again. <laughs> My favorite type of books, too. Bryant judges a book by its cover. <laughs> 100% for sure. <laughs> All right, West River Ryan, what are you drinking? Oh, I've got a spotted cow out of New Glarus, Wisconsin. All right. Nice. And Pin Monkey Clark, what are you drinking? Well, the, mount, the mountains are blue here in central Kansas. <laughs> so uh, just drinking a, a beer. It's one of my, one of my favorites and uh, one of my favorite players' favorites. So Coors Light it is. All right. Well, if I keep oh, having to come up with nicknames for you, I'm gonna to have to start looking them up again. So yeah, you used to do I'm favorite enjoying pin monkey. bowling. What Ryan? Favorite players beer. Who's that? Patrick Mahomes. Come on, man. Uh, Coors Light. Once in a generation QB. I just <laughs> thought maybe he drank his brother's beers when he doesn't finish them or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Jackson Mahomes' favorite beer is? Do they still make uh, apple teenies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Trent, what are you drinking? All right. I am drinking um, the Trust Buster Scottish Ale from Mount Rushmore Brewing Company in Custer, South Dakota. It's pretty Sweet. good. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, before we get to the subjects here, I was uh, feeding my dog right before this, okay? Mm -hmm. And for the listeners, I posted a picture of him on... Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) I have posted a picture of him on Instagram. He's a 100-pound Weimariner. Good-looking dog. Anyway, we started feeding him pumpkin because he was eating grass, and we're trying to feed him something that will keep him from eating grass. So at dinner time, I'll give him pumpkin. Tonight, I did not give him pumpkin because I didn't have a fresh can, and I was too lazy to walk upstairs, so I gave him his food. He looked at me without the pumpkin like, what the hell is this? And refused to eat it. So I had to go upstairs, get some pumpkin. I go downstairs, put a scoop in there, and yep, right away starts eating it. My picky dog, jeez. Did, did you say pumpkin in a can? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah, we've had I'm not going to give him like an actual pumpkin, like the... the... <laughs> You can go to Walmart and get pumpkin puree in a can, Bryant. I'm, I'm looking up canned pumpkin right now. I, I guess you Again, can. Have you fruits and vegetables. I believe Clark asked this a couple weeks ago. It's actually in the pie section at Walmart. You'll find it yeah. there in like the baking goods next to the pie crust, stuff like that. 
One hundred percent. Give it a pumpkin. pumpkin. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> Giving it a pumpkin during Thanksgiving break was probably pretty easy with all the pie floating around. Yeah, it's, it's really yeah. hard to find find actual pumpkins in like February and March and April. But you know, if you got to keep your dog happy, you got to find a way somehow. That's Remember right. That? Whatever doggo wants, doggo gets. That's right. Oh, man. So since we're talking it's, about it's... pets, my cat has the zoomies right now. So if I <laughs> yell dart real quick, you know what's going on. <laughs> Joey's mic will be More... flying off his desk. More That's so he'll probably just jump at me. So yeah. usually we'll hear you yelping in pain because yeah, he's trying to attack you in the middle of a hot take. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, Brian or Ryan, so I brought up the pumpkin. So Thanksgiving was this past week. We put a ton on Instagram, so we'll uh, give a little rundown of that and talk about what we all did for Thanksgiving. Um, how Joey smoked every meat he could find in Missouri, apparently. I sure did. Uh, I spent a lot of money at Jennings and Walmart. They loved me this week. <laughs> uh, give you a little bit of a rundown. I started with... Uh, Let's see, Wednesday night, I did steaks. God, I don't even know what the hell I did. I did stuffed pork chops at one point. Um, one time I did a ham on Thursday, just scored it, rubbed it down with some barbecue rub, and did some garlic butter on it. Made my first mashed potatoes ever. Those are also on Instagram. I did garlic mashed potatoes. Those turned out phenomenal. Ate almost all that whole ham already, which was good. And then... Uh, Friday after the Iowa win, I made steaks uh, on my pit boss. All this was on my pit boss. I think I slept next to that thing most of the weekend. <laughs> uh, and then Saturday I did, I call them drummies, but they're basically just chicken, <laughs> big ass chicken legs. I was going to do the frozen wing things and I'm going to, I was going to ask this question later, but uh, is anyone that bought those? Cause they are fucking expensive, like $14 for like, 24 ounces well i got two packs of big ass drummies then it ended up being about two and a half almost three pounds for 10 bucks and they weren't frozen so put those on there made uh uh spicy garlic wings drummies for saturday's games and then sunday was the big day did a brisket and a two five pound pork loins for work the next day have you seen an increase in the price? Because I know there's like they're adver- actually advertising like shortage of like chicken wings, so like Wingstop is doing like thighs or something. Have you noticed an increase in the last few months because of that? So when you do like the frozen ones, like I said, they went up exponentially, and I haven't done them in a while because I normally just buy a chicken or I'll buy pork chops. Pork still seems to be okay, but man, beef and chicken have went up like insanely especially wings and i was mm-hmm. super surprised this weekend when i went to buy them so that's why i got the ones i did and they turned out really well yeah i did uh um those wings or not, not the wings i did the legs as well those drummies you call them drummies but they're full-size chicken drumsticks right. my right my dad dad brought those and uh i think there were 10 of them in there i did half and half i just did half of them just naked didn't put anything on them threw them on the smoker Mm -hmm. and the other half um i used the uh fire and smoke society uh sweet pepper uh honey kissed bird rub and that was awesome i know you've said that you liked that uh that brand's rubs before yeah so the two that i used were the chickalicka bam bam and the wing commander and I use a half and half with oil on those. And then I use cookies, wings and things sauce. And that honey, the other one that you used, um, another guy at work. So our work usually gets us free uh, hot lunches every day. And since they're setting up for a Christmas party, they're not doing it this week. So we kind of like, that's why I did the brisket and the loin. And he did five whole chickens on his smoker for everybody and use that seasoning and holy shit i haven't used that before and i'm definitely going to use that again i'll add that to my uh spice cabinet which is basically taking over all of my dish cabinet and everything else that's what happens when you're a bachelor you just keep accumulating rubs and spices yeah Um, it's just fire and smoke society sweet pepper honey kissed bird rub uh i found it at walmart so you you can find it there really good yeah so if anyone is getting into smoking and stuff one uh we found a tabletop smoker for bryant 
so that he might be able to get in on it. Uh, they people, a lot of people use it for camping or if it's out on their uh, uh, like patio and stuff, we can post that link for Pit Boss. It's pretty damn cool. And I've read a lot of reviews on that and people love it. They say it's just as good as the full size. So there's that. You can get all that at Walmart. You can get all the smoke and fire. You can get all of, or fire and smoke. You can get all the uh, Pit Boss rubs. They've, there's just a ton of stuff. And just try things. Uh, the brisket that I did this weekend, I've never done anything so easy. Normally I do like a couple different rubs. I'll rub it down with oil. I was just like, man, I kind of want this to taste like the jerkies that I've been, you know, getting good compliments on at work and stuff. So I did Worcestershire, cookies, flavor enhancer, and garlic salt. And that was it. And just threw that baby on there and it tasted amazing. The fat on that was just like a steak. It was, it was really good. Yeah. So the other things that I did um, this weekend, I did burgers. I like to do, we have a propane grill as well. But I've kind of, I've started to do my burgers on the smoker too. Um, they, I feel like they turn out really well. I like the texture of it. Um, I did the legs, uh, just like Joey, like I talked about. And then I cold smoked too this weekend. I cold smoked some cheese. And a um, little, little secret here, you can cold smoke your mustard. Uh, Torres let us in on that one. So he told me not to give up his secrets, but oops. Um, <laughs> but uh, Sorry, yeah, Torres. <laughs> I did uh, five things of cheese. I did a raspberry jalapeno cheese, uh, pepper mm. Colby Jack, a white cheddar, a pepper jack, and just a cheddar. And then did the mustard. That was all cold smoke. So I just filled my smoke tube up with the pellets and just let that smoke until the pellets were gone. I think it was about five to five and a half hours. Like you don't turn your smoker on or anything, right? It's just the no, smoke tubes you go in just, and you just let the smoke roll. Okay. Yep. You just use the shell of your smoker. You don't, it doesn't mm-hmm. even need to be plugged in. So you're just letting the smoke from the smoke tube roll. Um, so I, yeah, that's really good. I mean, I brought the cheese off the smoker and immediately just cut a chunk off it and started eating it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then you use hey, this. What's up? When you're doing your burgers, do you do this? Do you open the sear plate up for them at the end? Yeah, I did it right at the end. So I let them smoke. Yeah. See, I did uh, eight minutes on each side at, uh, I think, 400. And then just right at the end, I put the cheese on there, opened up the uh, opened up the grate um, for the yeah. last minute. Because that, yeah. um, that is yeah, what... hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it said it gets up to 1,000 degrees once you open that up. And yes. you have it up to the maximum. Yeah, for me, I have, I mean, I've, I've said before, I have the combo. I've got the propane and the smoker. That propane mm-hmm. side rarely gets used anymore. I mean, burgers and brats and all that are so much better on the smoke side. It's crazy. So you do have a combo, Ryan? I do, yes. Nice. I was always thinking about getting one, and now they have the Pro Series from Pit Boss that has the griddle on the one side. That you can oh, that'd be awesome. The- you can exchange that out for propane grates. And I always thought that would be cool, but I really want a griddle. Um, but so when I do any grilling or anything on mine, I open that sear up right away and turn it on 250 and just let them sit over the flame. And I really like that flavor also. It gives it a smoky flavor, but at the same time, grills it at the same time as you're doing it like a propane t- uh, grill would. So sure. I, I might have to try it. that sometime. Yeah, usually I just do slow and then yeah, like Trent said, last couple minutes just sear it and then but yeah, I might have to try it that way. Yeah, yeah I especially have if done you're it. cooking for just go ahead, Trent. Yeah, I have done it that way before. I think the first time I ever did burgers, I just opened that thing up. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. you said, like two fifty and just from start just seared them with mm-hmm. that. Yep. So normally when I'm grilling, I do like two steaks. I'll do like three or four burgers. And that's exactly how I do it because you can set everything wrong on your plate. So and that's also, I know we talked about doing brats. That's how, so how I do brats as well. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then the last thing I did, I did, we had a Thanksgiving on uh, Sunday night. I did the dessert for, I did a uh, choc- chocolate pecan cobbler pie type thing. It was, oh my, God, it was awesome. Was yeah, it was uh, just a pie crust, uh, a whole bag of chocolate chips, and then uh, butter, vanilla, corn syrup, eggs, 
and uh, chopped pecans, and mm -hmm. it it turned out awesome. Yep, it looked amazing. I know if anyone out there that's listening, if their mouth is watering like ours are right now, look us up on the Instagram. All the videos are up on there. We made reels of everything, and we also tried to share things on the Twitter and Facebook so that everyone can see these things. It was, I don't know about you guys, but I had a shit ton of fun doing all of it. It was a lot of work, but I had fun doing it. Yeah, our Instagrams kind of turned into just, uh, what we smoke today? <laughs> <laughs> Show, showing off the, the, the new new smoker rig that you got or your newest recipe. Honestly, that's, right. that's kind of the stuff I really haven't had too much uh, experience or really honestly a desire to smoke meats. I will gladly go and eat some from other people, but... You know, the more that you guys talk about, the more that I'm watching this stuff get posted, it always looks fucking delicious by the end of it, you know? And it's kind of like almost a crock pot, if you will. You, you set it, and, and you don't forget it, but, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a slow burn, literally, and then fucking mm -hmm. everything that you make on it is delicious. You sit there, you watch the smoke roll out of the stack, and you just drink your beer. Mm -hmm. yep, it's you hydrate. Easy. I yes. mean, I usually turn it on, and I have a remote thermometer, so I just go play Call of Duty Vanguard while it's cooking. <laughs> so yeah, You can well, also do that, or you can do like what I do and hook the projector up in the garage, turn all the lights off, and hook my Xbox up to that baby while I'm right next to the smoker. So, there you yeah. go. What did you smoke this weekend, Clark? I didn't spend a lot of time next to my smoker. We were traveling this weekend, but uh, on Thursday I did – smoke a couple of chickens uh i just kept it real easy it was kind of uh short notice as to what we were going to actually do there on thanksgiving day so grabbed some chickens from the store rubbed them down with uh one of my favorite barbecue rubs a little bit of yard bird out of from plowboys barbecue um had great flavor just just that time on the smoke man like there's nothing better than getting you a, a fresh meal coming from that pit boss smoker mm -hmm. And Ryan, update for you, because you're the one that brought up the uh, Bear Mountain. My two bags will be here tomorrow. Excellent. Just FYI. I'll switch those out and try them out, baby. Excellent. Yeah, I uh, I switched them over and did some burgers and stuff on it. I haven't done any big cooks with them yet, but the burgers, I feel like, have a lot better taste now. No, oh, awesome. I will definitely try them out and see how they go. Do you do anything over the weekend, Ryan? Um, I, not really. Um, I did some brats, so nothing too big. The brats were actually from my dad who went, um, boar hunting down in Oklahoma and made Ooh. some, made some homemade brats. So that was, that was pretty good. It was nice. really, it was really cool of the smoking those and, and, uh, getting different flavors there. So I did have a listener ask a question about how many of us actually do hunt or, you know, actually do any wild game stuff. I know I have a rifle and I've went turkey hunting once and I should say I went bird watching because I didn't see a goddamn thing. <laughs> uh, um, so I still haven't shot anything other than skunks and groundhogs, but does anyone else do any hunting or I know Trent does fishing. Yeah, we used to hunt way back you know when i was young but uh mm -hmm. do more fishing now um i actually do have some northern pike in my freezer that i do need to pickle and mm. pickling fish mm. is especially northern pike is a really good way to do it because it dissolves the all the y bones that are in pike which is a problem with those uh, but i do need to do that maybe this weekend i'll get at that and maybe put some videos on instagram of pickling fish no oh, awesome um i don't do as much hunting as i as i really should i went uh went pheasant hunting last year once with with river taking him out for the first time and i was really hoping i'd get out more this year but that just has not happened unfortunately but mm, okay. the issue with me is i would love to go deer hunting but living in western south dakota um in the black hills the deer here suck um mm -hmm. if you if you've ever had Black Hills prairie deer versus corn fed deer, there is a night and day difference. And sage fed deer are just not near as good as what corn fed deer are. So if I ever get some property out East River to go hunt hunting on, I'd be happy to, but I just don't wanna I don't wanna shoot a sage sage fed deer. And and uh pine tree fed deer too. <laughs> nice. Clark, Clark Bryant, either one of you do much hunting? Absolutely I was gonna let, not. 
<laughs> I, this is Clark. I haven't hunted since I was young in high school. We did deer hunting back then. I would do bird hunting, you know, go sit in a, a hedgerow and watch for the doves to fly by, stuff like that. But uh, ever since, you know, going to college and moving away, you, I don't, I don't really want to go hunt public land personally mm -hmm. so yep i don't know that that hobby just kind of disappeared so I, i'm well, definitely more back in the day i would have been the gatherer of berries than the hunter of food unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> well uh if we ever do get to a point where you guys want to make a trip down here my brother's in-laws own quite a bit of land in southern central missouri that we could go hunt on and there's about 10 to 15 deer stands we could all just pluck shit on and they're building a cabin and shit down there that it's going to be really nice so maybe we'll talk about that in the future maybe do some uh content down there while we're driving around and shit that Excellent. sounds really fun yeah i have a game for that mm -hmm. smoke our own kills oh yeah now we're talking yeah. there you well, go. Yep. we'll have to make it a competition whoever does the worst we'll have to come up with a punishment for sure <laughs> they have to do all the cleaning. <laughs> Clean up all the beer cans that we drink out there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, jumping into some sports here, college basketball. Um, just as everybody expected, Iowa State to be six and zero and ranked nineteenth this year. I, mean, I, I saw it coming. Absolutely. I think if we roll the tapes back, actually, that's not what you said. <laughs> There's no evidence of that, and don't go listen to that. Actually, podcast. we've got uh, archives full of it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty amazing that Iowa State won two games all of last year, um, and then this past weekend over Thanksgiving, they play in the tournament out in New York and beat two top 25 teams. Hell, one of them being a top a, 10. One, yeah, one of them is top 10. And they just jump into the top 25. So pretty awesome. TJ Otzelberger has got them rolling and playing some defense, which um, it's a fun change of pace, man. Yes, it's a breath of fresh air. But Iowa State versus Memphis, it was I mean, Memphis looked frustrated. Like Iowa State's defense, they just took it to them, which it was fun to watch. So I don't I don't know what, if you what I heard a, a a couple people saying is like Memphis I think later in the year they're going to be a dangerous team they probably will be that top you know ten twenty team but they're such raw athletes right now which oddly enough you know when you have a team that's playing together like Ox in this defense you're going to make a probably more talented team look like fools out there you, you know it just. The, the, I, I hate it because I'm usually used to Iowa State, like last year, like, okay, I'll check in in the second half. And by the time you're getting to these games, man, if you're not watching the first half, they're already – so far they've just been blowing people out of the freaking water, you know, by the second half, and it's not even a game. They're just kind of keeping the cruise control on to make sure they don't catch up at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, Memphis, like you said, like they – they're going to be better later in the year. They're very young. I think they had quite mm -hmm. a few like four and five star freshmen on that team. So yeah, like you said, later in the year they're going to be they're going to be better. Um, that game that Gabe Kalsher, he had like thirty points for Iowa State. Um, he looked pretty impressive. And then our all of our favorite players, you know, his name to say Al Jazz. He had a pretty good game too. So he was fun to watch. Next up for the Cyclones, they play December 1st. They play Arkansas Pine Bluff. And then I believe Creighton is after that. I think they're halfway decent. And then I think we, well, we'll have another podcast before then. But then we get to the Cyhawk game. So, Yes, sir. Um, yeah, got some good games coming up here for the Cyclones. It'd be awesome if Iowa State and Iowa can keep this rolling and both be undefeated going into that game. Um, who knows? Maybe Iowa can crack the top 25 by then, too. So uh, Iowa State definitely has the easier road up into that game at this point, though. Yeah. Iowa, yeah. I, Iowa though, they, they beat Virginia last night. Mm -hmm. And I watched that game. It was uh, real close. Iowa shot. 
lights out in the first half. Virginia just had no answer for mm-hmm. Jordan, Jordan Bohannon and Keegan Murray. And then second half starts, uh, Murray gets his ankle twisted and just wasn't the same the rest of the game. And Virginia was able to lock down their defense. And when they were down by 21, they ended up taking the lead at one point. And uh, Pat McCaffrey comes up with a big block at the end of the game to seal the win for Iowa. And, yeah, it was a hard-fought game. They looked impressive on both ends. And I hope they keep that up. The only thing I was going to say, it was so confusing watching that game because both – teams their star player was named Murray like Iowa has Keegan Murray, Murray obviously mm-hmm. but Tane, they were also saying Tane Murray and I was, I'm more of a casual fan and I always hear you keep going on and on about Murray so I was just like they're talking about well Murray's out and Murray makes the play I'm like who the fuck how is this guy out and making plays at the same damn time <laughs> well Keegan's twin brother Chris actually plays for Iowa too so oh, there are yeah, two Murrays more, on even Iowa even more confusing. yeah one's Keegan is 24 and Chris is 15. If you're ever watching again, uh, I know you will for the Cyhawk game, but uh, yeah, they uh, they're at different places right now. Keegan has kind of um, transformed his game faster than Chris has, but I think Chris is going to be a good player at some point. Also, um, do they just and... go for brothers because they have the McCaffreys too? Yeah, but Patrick's the only good one. Jesus, we're ripping on Connor like that, huh? I completely forgot what his first name was. I'm only looking at <laughs> I'm looking at the stats but, in front of me. That's the only reason I know his name. No, nah, I know. I mean, up in I mean, in years past too, I've always ragged on him for holding on to the ball too much and being a hothead like his dad. So I don't know. Patrick's Patrick's gonna be a way better player than Connor was. But Connor's done some good things for the program and everything like that. So I can't hate on him too much. And I'm not trying to. I just Patrick's better. But yeah, Iowa looks good. Uh, number two, Purdue coming up on Friday, and then Illinois on Monday, and then the Cyhawk game next week. So, two big games coming up that I can talk about next week. Uh, Purdue is leading, or they beat Florida State ninety-five to sixty-three, or something like that earlier. But uh, number one, Purdue is playing Ohio State right now. Number two, or. Sorry, number one, Duke, is playing Ohio State right now. Uh, 53-42 is the score at the moment. Yeah, so Gonzaga loses to Duke Duke. the other night. So Mm -hmm. they don't make it to the tournament undefeated just to lose in the third round again. So good for them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Gonzaga fans. All of our um, Washington State fans listening to this Heartland podcast, yes, we apologize every, sincerely. Everybody in Spokane, <laughs> yeah. sorry. I apologize. Don't stop listening. <laughs> I think we probably already lost that C. Chile's listener. And we're going to lose the two dozen we had in Tacoma. We are just – we're bleeding <laughs> listeners right now, guys. We got we to nip it in the bud. <laughs> because of one Gonzaga slam, whatever. <laughs> Way so, to go, Trent. Yeah, whatever. So down in Kansas, uh, KU they had a, a they were in a good game on was that Saturday, and uh, unfortunately they couldn't pull it out. Clark, you had anything about that? It was on Friday. It was on um, Friday. They, they played Thursday, so uh, they were in the ESPN Events Invitational, which kicked off on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Uh, they won that game on Thursday. Um, that was against North Texas. So then they played again on Friday against Dayton, one of those uh, teams with a name, mm-hmm. and they lost that one at the buzzer from a shot by a guy. I, I didn't even check to see his name. I was on the road, but they lost at the buzzer to Dayton. So, well, and, yeah. that, and that, like you said, that's a that's definitely a March Madness team. You hear the name, and you know, hey, it, it, look at this seven versus. Uh, 10 seed, you know, Oh, I, I, I recognize Dayton. You write it down. Yeah. So then they did play on Saturday as well. Uh, they finished up that tournament against Iona and they did beat Iona 96, 83. So it's good to finish off the tournament with a win. Um, they're looking ahead here this week. Uh, they'll be playing St. John's university on the third. So got that to look forward to. That's uh, part of the Big 12 Big East battle. 
Kansas State looks like uh, they're they're going to have a little in-state rivalry coming up here next week. They they do. Um, Kansas State. So they they had the rough start. Had a couple good matchups there in a tournament. Um, so they're three and two at the bottom of the conference standings. If you want to look at those right now, um, everybody in the big 12 is rolling with one loss or better, except Kansas state. They're three and two overall, but uh, they've got, they just came off a big win over one of those uh, heartland teams in North Dakota crushed them. And then they've got, uh, they play tomorrow. That is on the first they play against Albany. Uh, if you can name their mascot, Trent, go right for it. Albany? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Should I know this? No. Oh, come on. It's a dog. It's a dog. Yeah, geez, Trent. If it's not the it's Chihuahuas, the... I'm going to be upset. <laughs> yeah, the Great the Danes. Al- Albany Great Danes. Uh, they're one and five right now. So if that game's close, uh, don't be thinking much of Kansas State. Maybe. That's what they got going on this week, and then they will be having that in-state uh, matchup with Wichita State University on Sunday, December fifth. Wichita State's come out this season; they've been looking good. Um, the only loss being Arizona, which we've talked about. So, watch out for that game on the fifth. It it could be a pretty big game for those uh, Kansas teams that are involved. And uh, LSU, they keep rolling as well. I, since you're going to talk about the SEC, Wichita State did just beat Mizzou. I want to say it. Yeah. Say it. I mean, you can you can give Mizzou all the hell you want, considering you're from Missouri. So <laughs> go yeah, ahead. I'm from Missouri, and I've never have been a, a Mizzou Tiger fan. So, all right. So LSU, they are also seven and zero to join. Everybody else's team here, basically, that are undefeated still. Yeah, I don't think anyone really planned on LSU being decent like Iowa State. I don't think anyone planned on it. But, yeah, they just won the Emerald Coast Classic after beating Penn State and then Wake Forest. Um, they're they're not ranked, but I guess they're, you know, officially number 28, and they, they got 93 votes. So they're getting the votes. Um, who knows? They might be able to break through the top 25. Um, coming up, they've got Ohio and Georgia Tech. Ohio tomorrow. I, I don't see them being too much of an issue, but it just uh, they've got the number one defense in the SEC right now, only allowing fifty four point one points a game, and six n- number six defense in the country. So very strong defense. Um, we'll see if it continues. I guess. Yeah. Now with LSU and say Iowa State both coming up into their conference schedules here in the next month or so. The the schedules are about to become pretty brutal for both of them because the SEC and the Big 12 are pretty strong right now with top 25 teams oh, like <laughs> have, Baylor have and you... Texas, Kansas all in the top 10 for the Big 12. SEC has half of their conference in the top 25. Yeah, so so. They play the first, the first ranked team they play is Auburn on December 29th. Then they've got they've got number twenty one Auburn. The next game is number nine Kentucky. Then number thirteen Tennessee, number fourteen Florida, number ten Arkansas, number sixteen Alabama, and then number thirteen Tennessee. Yeah, I was just so, gonna point that out if you didn't, dude. That is that might be one of the worst stretches <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> It'll be an interesting month for them, that's for sure. And I mean, it's just that's just three straight weeks of that. Yeah, yeah, the conference schedule for them is going to be brutal. Um, so we'll see how real they are. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at Iowa. Do. I'm looking at Iowa State's conference schedule right now, and outside of Texas, KU, and Baylor, other than Iowa State, there's no other Big Twelve teams ranked. So they're the ones that are ranked besides Iowa State are ranked very high. So mm-hmm. that's very top tough. heavy. Yes, for sure. Um, so we'll have that to look forward to coming up here in about a month. And then of course the big Iowa, Iowa state, I hope that it's a ranked game. That'd be awesome. If Iowa can knock off Purdue, they jump into the top 25 and top 25 matchup for the Cy Hawk game next week. I think if they go ahead, Joy. 
I think if they play Purdue close, um, I mean, I don't know if they'll win or not. Uh, they have the firepower to do it. Just whether that defense can slow down Purdue. Um, and I think if they play Purdue close and can get a win out of Illinois, uh, I think that they'll be ranked. Just which would imagine, be awesome. Imagine, you know, the, going into this year, we had a top 10 football matchup, with, which was a dream come true until Iowa State played. Then it wasn't a dream for me. But then we could potentially have a top 25 matchup in basketball. It just really shows where both programs are really coming into their own you know, I, of course, they're the money-making sports, but it's kind of nice seeing both of them getting kind of that re- national recognition too. And it I wonder what the last time. Wrestling. Yeah, and, yeah, and wrestling. Sh- well, is Iowa State top ten? I thought they were thirteen. Or I'll, I'll double second. check while Trent goes on. Well, top fifteen they, anyway. They're and eighteen. Then, Never mind. So top twenty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think both women's basketball programs are ranked in the top 15. So it's kind of cool to see all these ranked matchups between Iowa and Iowa State. It's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The boys from the Heartland will be right back. Everybody's favorite segment except for mine. Let's do some NFL locks of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going losers first here. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, are you two flipping yep, a coin on. since uh, you don't want to say it, but since you're both one and three? I don't know. I thought maybe I would go last so I could just pick someone to go up against and lose some more money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll go first then. No, so. I can go. I can go first if you want me to. Go go ahead. If I'm you going. if you're ready, you go. Cool. I am. I'm going to take the Ravens at four and a half under a minus four and a half. Uh, they are playing. God, and of course I close that tab. <laughs> Come on, Joey. Uh, We're Ra- supposed to be a professional <laughs> podcast. People are expecting it's the, the one top tab quality. I had open. My bad. Oh. Steelers. Well, we we haven't had a, yes. the greatest history in this podcast of open tabs going on. So Joey, just make sure your computer's <laughs> muted, please. Yeah. So, and don't say what those open tabs are. Yes. <laughs> well, don't tell anybody. But I'm also using my work computer, so there won't be any of those tabs open. Oh, damn it, Joey. <laughs> yeah. But uh, right, yeah, so- they are four and a half point uh, favorites against the Steelers. And we kind of covered it on the last podcast. Big Ben just looks a shell of what he used to be. I think the Ravens run away with this, to be honest with you. I know they've had close games, and they've had a ton of games where they shouldn't have won. I believe they have like five or six wins by single digits, basically the opposite of Nebraska. Um, I just think that they pull this one out because I don't think Pittsburgh can do much. But as my record tells – it's probably going to be wrong, but whatever. I'll take the Ravens. At start start and fading, half. right? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> All right. So I am going to go. Sorry, Joey. I'm going to pick the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Huge spread. I'm taking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They are a 10 and a half point favorite to cover that versus the Falcons. Again, sorry, Joey. Why are you apologizing to him? The Falcons will probably win. Yeah. It's I true. Mean, that would be a great lock of the week now. <laughs> Best case scenario for <laughs> Joey Tramp picked I'm, against his I'm team. <laughs> probably even going to wear my Calvin Ridley jersey when they play, and he's not even playing. So, <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. Just uh, give the Falcons a win because I'm taking Tampa Bay. They are 5-6 and six and in the hunt, so let's do that, baby. Well, I talked about on the last pod that the Buccaneers are getting hot. They got Tom Brady getting hot going into the playoffs. So that was I my bet three people get COVID on their team now and Falcons win by 10. Hey, that's what happened <laughs> when I picked the Packers. I picked the next day, Aaron Rodgers gets COVID. So. <laughs> I think it sounds like Giselle has a cough and Tom Brady might be out for the week. So I think I should get a backup pick. Every no, week, no. just in case that happens. Don't yeah. screw over another yeah. team. I we let like Joe take trying... three picks last week. We're not letting you have two. Trent's putting in all these stipulations to get a damn win. I don't like it. Hey, I had to lock <laughs> in one at the end. Trent's just trying to do a backup. 
It's not All the right. first week he's done that either. <laughs> no, no, I got to get off this uh, losing uh, streak somehow. So, <clears throat> anyway, Clark, you're two and two on the year. Who you got? I am, and you know, you guys talk up them Vikings, but they always play their games close. They are seven point favorites over the Lions this week. <laughs> Give me them Lions. They're covering. There we go. Someone's That's a good bet, me. Clark. Yeah, absolutely. We believe in the Lions on this podcast. We do. Yeah. And that's the second I wouldn't be surprised play. if the Lions got their first win Third this time. Week. Everybody's a, on the Lions. And it's a home game, too. Oh, my God. It's, yep. it's going to happen, folks. Put the house on the Detroit Lions winning. So Clark's <laughs> lock of the week. Don't is put your house on the Detroit Lions <laughs> winning. <laughs> gamble, gamble responsibly. <laughs> All right, so Ryan, Ryan is still undefeated. Who you got, Ryan? Um, I'm going to go with the Bengals at minus three against the Chargers. The Bengals like minus that. three versus Chargers, yes. So even though Bengals? that was one of my Super Bowl picks. Chargers. Bengals have just looked good the past couple weeks. They look they so good. They put up a ton of points so- last week, so. So speaking of them, did you see the block that Joe Burrow put on TJ Watt last week? Yeah, he uh, – I believe it was like a last-minute shovel pass, and then the running back ran to his side, and TJ Watt went for it, and Burrow just got in his way. He got pancaked, but at the same time, he was there and going for it. So <laughs> props to Joey uh, – Joey – what do they call it? Not Joey Buckets. It doesn't matter, but, yeah, big game Joe. I think it's probably uh, well. Joey Bruises at this point. probably with that offensive line (laughs) all right and uh our other undefeated pickers brian he's taking the chiefs at negative nine and a half okay let's go on oh my god i was i was just gonna say i I was joking like you left it for me but yeah no absolutely man i would say that the the chiefs have won three of the last uh five versus denver they're only two and three against the spread so it's a little iffy, but those two wins have come in the last. Uh, that two is a big spread on that division rival. Like I, I just they're not. I don't think they'll win by ten. I think it'll probably be closer than that. But uh, it, is, it is prime time. He can come in and, and it sling is it, man. Prime time. I know. I, I'm just making sure. Is uh, who, who's starting for quarterback? Is it Bridgewater or is it still Drew Locke? Oh, I have no clue. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, John you, you Elway's combine... coming out of the booth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they wish. I mean, you combine the number of Super Bowls that Bridgewater and Drew Locke have, and you compare it to Mahomes, and you know, one versus zero. So yeah, but Mahomes gets it done, dude. So you're taking the Chiefs at negative nine and a half. All right, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Looks Homer. like everybody's taking the favorite except for Clark this week. Homer Bryant. Hey, uh, strikes again. Detroit. Uh, I actually, I had Tampa Bay. Trent took that one, and Detroit was kind of my like sneaky haha joke pick. And then you took that one too, so I did have to just become Homer Bryant again. Uh, yeah, Bryant was <laughs> falling back on option number three here. We kind of, we kind of yeah. forced him into it. But let's be honest, it was option one. You took two and three is for my jokey ones. <laughs> <laughs> I will right, take well, a head-to-head money bet if anyone wants to throw in on something. Just to oh, make it interesting. I mean, Trent did take the Bucks at negative ten. You could jump on those on your team here to cover. Yeah, you you oh, confident your team, Joey? But but then I'm one and three. Oh god, do I get the points? Ten and a half. Yeah, do I get the is, points? Is that what it was? Is that what I got him at? Ten and a half. Yeah, ten and a half. Yeah, yeah. ten and a half. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. This is a side. I'm sticking with the Ravens for my lock, but I'll, I'll take that money. The Buccaneers and, uh, are going to win by. 14 to 35, anywhere in there. Tom Brady, Antonio Brown, and Leonard Fournette just got COVID all at the same time by kissing I, each other. They were all Perfect. hanging out together, yeah. Th- this is another Hamilton bet, Joey? Mm-hmm. All right. T- okay. Just I'll send you the Venmo request. For the listeners out there, uh, these spreads are brought to you by BetMGM. Yes, no, we all decided to no. pick the same – sports book this week i'm just yes. letting them know that we finally got our shit together and we're picking <laughs> from the same sports book and uh if they're looking for those spreads that's where we found them no free ads mgm do the right thing yeah start paying us we got some of that folding money now so we did we now we want more of it we're getting greedy that's Darn. right 
We're looking right. for a five dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on. Uh, now that we have the locks all locked in, let's uh, look at next week's. Uh, NFL action here starting Thursday, Dallas and New Orleans, a Heartland team in Dallas. Uh, they've kind of been a, well, they haven't been, but this past week they look like and they weren't that great. Mm-hmm. Um, they definitely so, lost one that they should have won. Yes. Yeah. I was going to call them a dumpster fire, but they, they have been hot up until then. So. I mean, that game did go into overtime. So yeah, I wouldn't. Say it's a dumpster fire. They still put up thirty some points. It's oh my just, god, the they the cow finish. The Cowboys are only one in three versus the AFC West this year, and oddly enough, they only beat the Chargers. <laughs> That's weird. Trent, huh? Trent and Joey Super Bowl team. Would you look at that? Hey, right. Cole, good news, boys. Would you just look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> just you know what just I say when it. I say something like that. I just look at it. Would you just? <laughs> would you look at it? <laughs> Vikings, they have the Lions that uh, that got brought up in the lock of the week. Um, I just hope the Vikings don't give the Lions their first first win of the season. If they do, Please. are the Vikings fans just not joining the podcast next week? Yeah, I might sit uh, down. Out. It's going to be down I'll to just, three of us. I have a lot to say. That's it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If the Vikings lose, I will join if my lock of the week hits. So, okay, I probably that, that's hear. that's the only thing that's getting Trent here, huh? Yeah, to brag up my pick. So, oh, so man. who's hosting next week? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, are we gonna flip I a coin between me, Joey, and Clark? Three you know, uh, Dart. <laughs> if we do look back, their first matchup this season was a nineteen to seventeen affair. So it was a last oh, second field goal. Yep, <laughs> the Vikings well, kicked a field goal as time expired to win. Here's the thing about the Vikings. The Vikings, I think, can beat any team in the NFL this year. I think they can also lose to any team in the NFL this year. <laughs> that is very well put. Well, according to the power rankings on the mothership, yes, uh, they did beat the Packers, who are ranked number one. So, yeah, I believe you are right there, Ryan. Packers stink. <laughs> I, I want to see it. Like a three week spread, they beat the Packers for number one. They lose to the Lions who are last. Like that is just <laughs> classic Vikings right there. I mean, it could happen because the uh, the Vikings play the Packers December or sorry January second. So in about a four week time, they could lose to the worst team. Well, I mean, in a three week time, they could beat the best team and lose to the worst team. So. Did you guys watch the Thanksgiving Lions Bears game? Yes. No. Those two teams are just awful. And then, mm-hmm. like, there was the one punt to Detroit, and the guy just didn't even know where to look where the ball was flying. It, that was just yeah. kind of a perfect explanation of what that team is this year. And that is a team was, that the Vikings could lose to. Is the sad? I was trying to watch good football, so I watched Old Miss, Mississippi State. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you weren't going to say Falcons. That's for sure. Trent, Trent and Jerry <laughs> just going to be crying alongside MCDC this week. It's going to be great. <laughs> Hopefully, they're not tears of joy coming from him. But, you know, so. And Tears uh, running down my tits, like Bryant said. <laughs> <laughs> Bring up classic. Uh, so the Chiefs, they have a prime time Sunday night football matchup for the Broncos. Arrowhead, prime yeah. time, division rival. It's going to be a great night of football. Will the offense find themselves, or is the defense going to have to carry them again? I think the offense will find themselves enough. That's just the way the Chiefs have been getting wins. I don't know. It is prime time. They tend they tend to play better in prime time. You know. I'm sorry. I'm th- I'm just thinking about it because we're talking about you know the offense going against this Denver Broncos defense. Um, I'm just laughing at Von Miller uh, a couple weeks ago when he got traded. He's going. I went to sleep four and four, and I woke up seven and one. And then <laughs> the Rams have been zero and three since. Now they're seven and four. Oh, like, what a, poor what Vaughn. A, poor Vaughn. Yeah, damn guy's allergic to grass and plays in a sport played on grass. And then he says that type <laughs> of shit. 
He's allergic <laughs> He's to the dipshit that has a poultry degree or some shit like that. What an idiot. A poultry degree? Yeah, he did, like, for his master's thesis, like, the reproduction of chickens and how they could be cloned and all this dumb shit. And if you're a smart person, you don't like birds. <laughs> do you, you got something against birds there? Aren't does you it the have to do with him? Does it, I was say, I'm does it have to do with him uh, growing them to eat them? Like, if, if that, if Von Miller's a, a fan of smoked meats, I'm with him. Let's go. See, I am deathly afraid of birds, and I've been house sitting slash critter sitting all week here on the compound, and they have a big ass turkey that every time I turn around comes up on me. They're about to lose another turkey. I killed one last time that they left, and I'm about to do another one here. So, <laughs> yeah, he, Ron Miller Joe, majored in poultry science at Texas A&M. Joe, Joey eats birds out of spite. Oh yeah, <laughs> every bite is just anger. So much in it. so going back to the whole von miller thing you know going to bed with his record waking up whatever the the broncos are three and one since he said that so that's kind of funny so so they are both seven and four right now oh my god are they really uh the no the broncos are one they're three and no they're six and five right now. they're six and five yeah okay Yeah, so that well, that that is kind of funny. Yeah, so he's only one game ahead on a team that had like a four game lead. <laughs> yep. Jesus. Sorry, sorry, Vaughn. Um, but uh, elsewhere around the uh, the Heartland, um, Green Bay. I think are they on a bye this week. Yes, I believe they are. So. Uh, Vikings could pick up a game here with a uh, with a win. The Bears, they get the Cardinals. Um, Cardinals are hot. They're nine and two, um, but you know they're they're nine and two, looking at uh, a high seed in the NFC in the playoffs. But they're you know rumors their coach could go to Oklahoma. I was just saying, is there distractions in Arizona? Maybe the Bears pull it out here, dude. Yeah. I don't see that ever happening, but why why is his name getting brought up to go to Oklahoma? Wait, that, Kingsbury? Yeah. 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 Him and, that that and, really? and Notre Dame yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Wow. I think so. I think that's more his agent just throwing that out there to try and get a little more money from the Cardinals, to be honest. I yeah. I, I don't see what he did at Texas Tech and going that's gonna translate to Oklahoma or or uh Notre Dame. I mean, hell, one of his best athletes, Baker Mayfield, transferred out of there to go to Oklahoma mm-hmm. and beat his ass. Like, what? Right. <laughs> How's that going to translate? Yeah, yeah, I don't. See I've only heard he has, he has a Sorry, year man. left on his contract or something like that in Arizona. Mm-hmm. I think that's why people are are bringing that up, his potential to leave. But the, I mean, he's he's nine and two right now. He's got the Cardinals nine and two. They're like a perennial team that just doesn't do anything um he's got a he great young qb to mold at a pretty high I seed mean, in the playoffs like he's gonna get an extension yeah he's gonna get an extension on his contract so yeah they'll probably get the one seed in the nfc i mean yeah yeah uh, nine and two looking, at, well good. looking at these uh conferences the nfc is looking a little bit weaker than the afc in my opinion mm-hmm. no you've, i you've definitely got your top yeah four or five teams if we're going to throw the Rams in there. You know, they're just looking about head, ahead above everybody else in their division. Whereas when you go to the AFC, like there's a good 10 teams in the mix there for that top spot in the AFC still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we talked about this last week too. It's still like with another week of football being played, um, there wasn't really a team – that we have seen so far that's like breaking away from the pack that we're like, okay, they're a Super Bowl favorite. Yeah, I mean, just... you, you do have the Cardinals and the Green Bay Packers that are at the top, but I mean, and Bucks. sorry, I forgot about the Buccaneers, but I mean, hell, even you look at the Rams, I mean, the Rams don't even have a winning record versus winning teams. I think they're only one and four this year. So, I mean, literally all their losses are the teams they're going to play in the playoffs with these winning records, so... Who even knows how the legit they really are? Yeah, there isn't that one team yet, and, and uh, the Cowboys are a hot mess. So mm-hmm. forget forget about the NFC East. 
so yeah they're you used to call them a hot mess they're just so hot and cold like they might kill somebody one week and then lose to the raiders in overtime on things mm-hmm. the raiders are six and five yeah. they're six and five that entire afc west they're not AFC good. west has a winning record mm-hmm. yeah they're they're six and five but i don't think they're they're good uh i don't know but elsewhere you in say the they don't think they're good but they're better than the vikings how Oof, dare did, you? Did you really have to hit him with that? Come on. I, I, I'm not pulling any punches now. Okay? That seems very personal. <laughs> I mean, if you bring up the playoff outlook, the Vikings are the eight seed right now, and they Washington's are. the yeah. seven seed. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, a losing record right now is in the playoff hunt. That's crazy. Yeah. Done right. Mm-hmm. That's because the NFC right. just beats up on in, each other. They're not the much NFC, better of a conference. In the AFC, that's not the case because there's 10, 6, and 5 or there's a bunch of teams that have that six and five or better record in the AFC. Mm-hmm. So another team in the heartland, the Colts, they're six and six. Um, Jonathan Taylor, he's still hot having great games. He, he started out slow this week. Um, and they scored a touchdown at the end, I believe, but they have the Texans mm-hmm. speaking of heart, hot garbage. That's the Texans. God, that probably should have um, been my pick. The, those those <laughs> fucking Texans are just awful. Last man. time I picked against the Texans, the number one team in the AFC lost to them. So I'm not doing yep, that again. Same here. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and that wasn't just any locks that we did. That was all of my fantasy football stuff. All of <laughs> you know my run your pool uh, playoff locks or not playoff locks, but weekly locks. Yeah, it was not great. So. <laughs> The boys from the Heartland will be right back. All right, let's move on to some wrestling, Joey. Yeah, so it was a not an amazing week, but uh, Iowa and Iowa State both wrestled the same teams. Iowa State wrestled, um, sorry, they wrestled Army and then also California Baptist. They beat Army 25 to 9. And then beat California Baptist 39 to nothing. That was on Saturday. And Iowa was supposed to wrestle Oregon State. And there was a bunch of travel and flight things that happened that they ended up not making it. So Army was like, hey, we want to come wrestle you. And Iowa goes, we'd love to wrestle you. So they uh, wrestled Army on Sunday. And it was 36 to 7 and had three pins, um, which leads up to a great weekend finale coming up uh iowa versus iowa state the cyhawk trophy is on the line this week uh we will cover that plus what's going on in the world of mma next week there wasn't a whole lot uh they don't like to do a whole lot during thanksgiving for the mma schedule but we will cover that next week i plan on recording on wednesday putting some out on thursday i want to get a big lead up for that iowa iowa state uh, matchup. I know that's a big one for the Heartland, but yeah, it was a good weekend. Uh, both teams won, and all the rankings are still going on. I, I do love how last minute we. I think we talked on the last pod about how you know Notre Dame, if they wouldn't really make the playoffs, they should schedule an out of conference versus BYU or whoever the hell wants to face them and get mm-hmm. that extra game. I just think that's awesome. Where here's Iowa that's sitting here, they, they lose a match. And also another team can just immediately jump in. Hey, you know, we'll just come to your facilities and wrestle you at the same time, and they can make it yep. happen. It, it's just amazing at that level you can make that stuff happen. Apparently a football mm-hmm. game, too much to plan. <laughs> well, I mean, wrestling, you can dictate, you know, who does wrestle and who does make weight. And if they were already in state, they're going to get paid by Iowa to come wrestle at Carver. So, I mean, it was, it was great for the sport, great for – army to get that in and they they won two matches which was awesome good for them Mm -hmm. uh i will say big wrestling news for this week was nick siriano who uh was last we saw him at Rutgers. um he's a two-time finalist one-time national champion he has signed with michigan which puts them in contendership for 
the national championship with Iowa and Penn State. That's a huge transfer for them. I believe he's going to do 133 again this year. So I would expect him to compete with the best of Rob or RBY and Dayton Fix. Um, and of course, Austin DeSanto. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he takes the top spot in the rankings right away. Um, I think it's RBY's uh, weight class to lose still, but Suriano is very, very good. And uh, like I said, already a national champion at 133. So that's a huge transfer signing. And I don't know why it happened so late in the season, but whatever yeah, he so, did. So that's... he hasn't wrestled all year, and now this transfer wrestling? Am I getting this right? Yep, yep. just signed it on Friday, and he'll be eligible huh. to wrestle, I believe, at the beginning of the year. So Awesome. Yeah. That's huge. It just adds another name to the Big Ten. He was always in the Big Ten. I believe, man, don't quote me. I think he started at Ohio State, but I know he was at Rutgers the last. So don't quote me on that. But uh, yeah, I, I know that's a huge signing for Michigan. Puts them back up there, you know, in the rankings. I know they were already really high up there anyway, but that helps them tremendously. That Their dual meet uh, points are just going to skyrocket now. That will jump them, I believe, over Oklahoma State and Missouri. Yeah, they're Michigan's number six right now. So yeah, if they bring in an all star like that, that I mean, mm-hmm. hell, that's going to put three uh, Big Ten teams at the top three. Then if they really jump Missouri mm-hmm. and Oklahoma State. Yep, and if he can make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, Mason Paris is already going to. If they can get a couple more of their middleweight guys to make the deep runs they did last year, man, watch out for Michigan. They could be uh, they could be a team to contend with with the top two. That's that's a scary scary lineup now. And that's all I got on wrestling for this week. Like I said, plan on to, doing something on Wednesday. I know Bryant talked about maybe going to the meet. Um, hopefully he gets the chance to. If not, I'm sure we'll both watch it and we'll both recap it uh, middle of next week. Uh, I'm going to try and bring Ronley back on. And my Uncle Wayne Mason from the Dirty Dodge up in Fort Dodge, I know he wants to talk about some Iowa wrestling, some Iowa State wrestling, and also some recruiting and stuff that's going on in the high school ranks in and, and Northern that's- Iowa. That's going to be kind of a separate one. And just in case, you know, kind of like the smoking of football, if you're not into it, mm-hmm. that's going to be an entirely separate one, right? Yep, yep. That'll be the under the combat sports thing. And uh, I'll okay. try and remake the intro to that. It was kind of last minute last time, as everything else was for that whole podcast. But uh, check it out. We recapped all of the weights last time. And this time it'll just be kind of a recap of what's going on and looking forward to the Midlands and the beginning of the conference schedule. Is there any UFC coming up? Yeah, so uh, like I said, not a whole lot happened this last weekend, but December 11th is the uh, Oliveira Poirier fight. We'll cover that in the next uh, on that Combat Sports podcast, and there's a couple other Bellator things that happen at the end of the year. Uh, I know UFC usually likes to put a end of the year, beginning of year big fight on, and we'll try and cover that one as well. All right. Anything else with combat sports? Not at the moment. Um, Just check us out next week sometime. All right. Well, uh, switching gears here, uh, the NCAA volleyball tournament is coming up. Um, I know Ryan and Clark have been looking a little bit into that. I've seen who Iowa State is playing, but I'm sure they have a little more than I do. Yeah, so the selection show for the – NCAA volleyball tournament. It's a field of 64. Um, that happened this past Sunday. And so that tournament field is set and kicking off on Thursday, December 2nd. Um, I've just kind of looked through as well, just making note of a few teams that we all like to follow here. Um, there, Iowa State is in the mix, along with uh, Nebraska there for Joey. Just just letting you know, they're, they're actually <laughs> towards the top there. And then... Uh, we got KU and K State going at it as well. Um, Louisville does lead the field. They are number one in the nation. They are undefeated on the season. And then uh, actually up there near the top is those Texas Longhorns. They're number two. So nice. Big week. So, yeah, I, I looked it up a little bit too. The four seeds are Louisville, Texas, Pitt, and Wisconsin. They're the top four. University of South Dakota is in there, and they play number they 12, are. Minnesota. Yep. yep. I did notice the lone team missing is Iowa. 
I'm not sure where their volleyball program is, but but yeah, that'll be starting here soon, and it's in Ohio this year. It is. Uh, that finals will be taking place in Columbus. Hmm. Yeah, I saw there's a few sites around the Heartland. I think does Iowa State they play in like they play in Minneapolis. Is it Minneapolis? And then I think was Omaha were they a site maybe? Uh, yes, Omaha because Creighton uh, they're hosting that one. They're actually I think they're in the top fifteen. I believe Creighton is. Um, so they're hosting their regional, and then um, Nebraska they're hosting there in Lincoln for their hmm. first and second round. Okay. So we yeah. gonna do a March uh, like a November Madness uh, for the volleyball tournament here. You can print a bracket out and start filling it out. We should. Let's do it against each other, and I'll have my wife fill it out for me. So you all. Will no, no that's bullshit. You have to fill out your own because we, <laughs> no one knows anything about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm she. she Iowa State. She loves to watch the, the Big Ten, and they're pretty good. So you'll be pretty safe picking, uh, I think, Big Ten teams throughout this, Joey. So there you go. Did you mention the defending champions? I did not. Kentucky, they are the number seven seed. There you go. Hmm. All right. Kentucky. I just uh, that saw state's s- pretty good at pretty good at volleyball. So uh, one bracket online that picked Texas to win it all. So I will probably stick with that bracket. You're picking the Never go against Nebraska when it comes to volleyball, believe it or not. Mm. I'm, they I'm are trying good. To, I'm trying to figure out who I want to win between Pepperdine and UCF volleyball right now. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll tune in to next week, folks, and you'll know my volleyball picks. We're going to go through all 64. Yeah, yeah, the volleyball breakdown. Clark, I expect that by next week. All right, I'll I'll, I'll make some notes for you here. uh, My wife will have that running on the TV 24-7 starting Thursday. So Nice. What Uh, else is she going to have on the TV? uh, Speaking of things starting on Thursday, thank you, Joey. uh, National Finals Rodeo is coming out of the chutes there on Thursday evening. Um, So National Finals Rodeo is the end-of-year event for – the PRCA um, organization, that is the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. They have many more events in that lineup. So that includes bareback riding, saddle bronc, bull riding, uh, tie down, team roping, steer wrestling, and barrel racing uh, in that PRCA organization. It is taking nice. place in Las Vegas at the Thomas and Mack Center, which is uh, UNLV's basketball stadium there in Vegas. Hmm. And uh, so that'll be available um, every night of the week for 10 days, starting on December 2nd on the Cowboy Channel. The Cowboy Channel? It That, that is legit, the Cowboy Channel. I think you can log in and just stream it. Or it's oh, on... it's on like thecowboychannel.com or something? Yeah, I believe so. Huh. I'll have to Google it, check it out here. Yeah. I say, and so you should post something on it if, in case anyone you know is interested. I I've never heard of that. Maybe I'll tune in. No, not gonna be. And yeah. football's on. I love steer wrestling. Like that's my favorite event. Those those are the big guys. They're gonna ride out on the horse next to that steer with the horns. Jump off their saddle, grab them horns, and just flip that steer on its side. I love it. Hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it last year. We watched quite a bit of it actually. It's kind of started it. You know, it's always on at bowling on Thursday nights, and then we kind yep. of watch it throughout the week at your house last last year. So I really enjoyed watching it. It's, it's pretty entertaining, actually. Nice. So there's a yeah. guy named Zach Jongblood, and he is from Iowa, Louisiana. That'd be my favorite pick. Two right heartlands there. in, in mm-hmm. one place. Yeah. I mean, there there has been a few guys from back home, like in Box Home, uh, mm-hmm. throughout the last few years that have been pretty good at, I think like, is it saddle bronc? I think is what they, what they ride. Um, Cause you know, Dayton yeah. is a big, the big rodeo town there. in central. I, I didn't know that it was a big national event until like you talk to someone outside of Iowa, you, you know, we live, live so close to it and don't think of it. And no, there's a lot of people that it's nationally recognized. Correct. Yeah. All Sweet. right. So, Go, go ahead, Clark. Sorry. I was going to say, speaking of things country, 
Uh, yes. You know, one of the best bands, in my opinion, is actually uh, making a comeback. They've Mumford and back, Sons? Get hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a. I'm talking about a a band coming out of the state of Oklahoma. Little John, the East Side Boys. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> I don't think they're from Oklahoma. No. I'm talking about the Turnpike Troubadours. Oh. So it's a band they some of our favorites here on the podcast. I know Trent and Ryan are huge fans themselves. Uh they've been broken up here for about three years now. Uh so their social media started to get a little active this week. And Mark, you want to fill in why they've been broken up for three years or just let that go? No, I'm not going to let it go. It's because of Miranda Lambert. Curse her soul. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it, I'll be honest. I kind of ignored the text about it. What, why? How did? How is Miranda Lambert involved? Uh, Ryan, do you want to take it? Um, the PG version or the R version? Just PG, please. Lose. We don't. Okay. We don't swear on this fucking podcast. Okay. Um. <laughs> basically, uh, was it two and a half years ago or three years ago that she had Turnpike um, as their opening as her opening act, okay. and throughout that time, um, the lead singer Evan Felker, he's always kind of enjoyed drinking and stuff, but he really ramped up his drinking on tour with her, and then she decided to start cheating on her husband then and and she he decided to start cheating on his wife at that point with Miranda and then he they stopped doing shows and he eventually led went into rehab to try to to stop drinking which he's been sober for two years now I think you said so good for him and him and his wife are back together so it sounds like his life is doing much better now but yeah Miranda basically broke them up She's she's basically a succubus to, to them. I guess. This is why anytime Miranda Lambert comes on my radio, I turn the channel. I will boo her for three minutes straight, then I'll change it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have this near and dear to me, dang it. You'll go on your rye rant and then That's you'll right. turn it off. That's right. Um, but yeah, so there's there's been a lot of stip- uh, a lot of guessing this week as they their social media became active they posted a picture um and there were rumors coming out um that they were getting back together and then that was confirmed with their with their activity um so a couple of the members they've taken off and done some other things with their own bands or you know trying trying to make a living themselves i know one of them was kyle nicks and the 38s and uh rc edward he has the rc and the ambers they actually had a show s- slated for this weekend at kane's ballroom which is a significant venue in the turnpike world um so they're actually still playing this weekend december 4th in tulsa at kane's ballroom and so there are rumors that that was going to turn into a turnpike show um kyle nix has confirmed though through his um his twitter account that that is not the case there's, it's still just a Kyle Nix and the 38s and RC and the Amber show. However, um, Turnpike has announced a show at the Red Rocks uh, with Reckless Kelly and Shovels and Rope on May 14th, 2022. Um, there's also, I believe, a couple albums uh, in the works coming f- to look forward to this uh, next year. Um, that Red Rocks show, by the way, it goes on sale on Friday. And I unfortunately was told that taking a year and a half old girl is not appropriate to a concert. So I may have year to year and a half. I thought it was a month and a half month and a half. Excuse me. Yeah. So that's not appropriate. Apparently that is apparently that's inappropriate. So, oh, I'm, so I think I'm going to have to. You're it. telling me I'm going to have to cancel my uh, three week old baby and uh, not, not take them to this concert now. I thought we just, have like a, I thought it was going to be a play date, Ryan. I thought so too, but apparently they're announcing that you're pregnant. I I think everyone's known that already. I didn't know. No, not for those Uh, for those for those who don't know. Yes, Ryan and Rebecca are expecting, and Brittany and I are expecting. Congrats! I didn't know about Clark and you or Brittany. Sorry. Uh, Yeah. Congratulations. We're expecting. I mean, congratulations to Ryan and Rebecca too. But I mean, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, We decided all around. 
we're jumping. We decided we would just try at the same time and see what happens. It yeah. turned out being pretty close, I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> it's I mean, we scheduled it, it all together. We're jumping in that dad pool with Trent. Yeah. It, it, so it sounds like that uh, Clark and Ryan will be uh, just leaving the wife at home with the newborns to go to the then i guess you know my my wife has already said that if i need to make it a boys weekend that is totally allowable so Ooh. work on all right all right who is, a, field who, trip. who is able to do the pre-sale tickets because i'll be working that day i'll look into it I... <laughs> let, let me get so, it up right now all right so, so for we... this oh sorry go, go ahead i looked at the prices it was actually it's only like 50 to 80 dollars so i thought it was going to be way more to be honest with you and you can get some good stuff in colorado just fyi <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 so uh, you, you've talked a lot about turnpike and and i don't really know anything about them other than their country like you said if you had to turn someone on to this band right now hey you have to listen to this song and you're going to get hooked what's the song Trent, what would be your number one uh, the song that got me into them was Long Hot Summer Day. Ryan? That for, me too, for, last night. For me, it'd be Jen Smoke Lies. Which is a great song. Or Good Lord Lori, one of those two. Those that, are my top two. Good Lord Lori is my number one. That, that was going to be one thing I've been noticing, because I've been looking at their top songs on, on Apple Music, and it's like a lot of lists. They it's Seven and Seven... Diamonds yep. and gasoline, so. gin smoke light. Like, can, can you narrow down your title? <laughs> a lot of subjects just thrown in there. All so, <laughs> fun fact Diamonds for and... those uh, Turnpike virgins here: um, a lot of their, their a lot of their songwriting is in a ballad style, and so you can kind of catch the same characters from one song to the next. Lori is mentioned a lot, and I don't know who this Lori lady is, but yeah, is mentioned a lot. Yep. Yeah, diamonds and gasoline that album uh that had long hot summer day on it so that's the first album i bought of theirs and like that album is a banger like every song on it's great see and i'm here's the weird thing for me is there i can't really name which album of theirs would be my favorite because there's i don't know some of the deeper tracks i'm just kind of like eh, whatever but the ones that i do the songs that i do like boy are they fantastic and i mean it's it's a large group of songs that i really like yeah um here or there there's a few kind that are like and eh, whatever but yeah they have a, a fantastic catalog so yeah. since we turned joey on to turnpike last night did did you just stream turnpike all day at work today joey <laughs> not all day but i did listen to <laughs> four or five songs and listen to the first two not I don't know why I didn't put it on my sound bar. And then I listened to two more and then another one as I went to bed and they were all good. And then I took the long way home from work today just so I could stream some more. And yeah, all their shit's really good. I, I love country music and I'm, you know, a huge fan of like Johnny cash and like Josh Abbott band and stuff. So this really hit home with me. It reminds me of a dirtier, grittier, like Luke Combs type stuff that, just makes you, you know, feel good about living in the heartland. And I recommend it to anybody. It is really good. Funny thing there, Joey, is they have a song called Long Drive Home. It's a great song. Yep. Oh, I didn't even get to that one. I probably will. <laughs> great tomorrow. one. Should it, put, should it, it, put it on should the playlist it. for tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. yeah I, I was getting a little worried. I'm looking at their fifth album here, A Long Way From Your Heart. And it sounds like a bunch of disasters. The House Fire, The Tornado Warning, <laughs> The House Fire no is a great one. Hype yeah, Bob was, Dream, like Jesus. I, I don't know if I'm gonna have a good time <laughs> listening to any of this. That was well, that was their last music, album right? before the that was their last album before the hiatus too. So yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe that was an omen. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, I'm working from home tomorrow and I plan on bumping all of that on my soundbar all day. So yeah, it's good stuff. All right. So anybody else need to get anything off their chest before we wrap up the fun cast for the week? I do want I to give see... an update. Go so, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. You go ahead. Nope. Um, I was going to say, I see LeBron has COVID, so he's out tonight. 
Oh. Yeah. Did they specify COVID? I thought they were trying to do the sneaky, like, no, it's a non-sports injury. He's just going to be out for 10 days, ironically. You know? No, but he did try to point out the people that gave it to him and get them kicked out of the arena. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Funny, my so update to has to do with COVID also. Tom Brady and all the Buccaneers have COVID. So that <laughs> oh, oh, no, Trent's pick. <laughs> uh, I want an asterisk by my record. Thank you. <laughs> I, I thought your update was going to have to do with the Big Ten dominating the ACC and the uh, college. Yeah, uh, that was actually my update. Ohio State beat number one Duke 71 to 66 right in front of our eyes as we were podcasting. So. It, it just uh, shows you how disrespectful the big 10 is coach K is on his retirement tour and you beat him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Um, so looking at this, if it all kind of shuffles up, that means uh, Purdue will be our new number one. If, yeah. if things kind of stay in line. Yeah. Probably when is that be... Iowa? When is the game with it's... Iowa? That's Friday, so Purdue so, probably won't be number one after Friday. No, so. no yeah, they're going to lose to Iowa. So. Have you seen the, <laughs> that that giant in the middle of their basketball court? How do they they've keep? Had, fun- they've had what? the same one for like seven teams in a row. God Dude, damn, I, I don't know. Are how you they talking do about that. Purdue? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was watching their game earlier whenever it was on. Where do they find all these seven footers in Indiana, dude? Right. <laughs> It, so Indiana, good. that's that's basketball, man. The Hoosiers, they're there. So that's, that's... They, there must just be something in the water in West Lafayette because yeah. every time I watch them, there's a minimum one seven footer out there. So I worked there for like three months way back in the day, and it's a great town to party. And if every anyone wants to go there, just give we need Joey's there. top ten party towns. It sounds he, like you got one. You go to a bar and you can't see over anybody because they're all seven foot tall. <laughs> oh God, Joey's at yeah. naval level. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so, I mean, I can definitely give that to us because I've been a lot of places. So all right, next next fun cast, Joey. Fun, Top ten party towns. Is fun cast. Is Manhattan, Kansas, in your list? Uh, no, I've never been to Manhattan, Kansas. Top, so no, well, you have. You Top haven't 10. lived then. Manhattan, Kansas right. was pretty fun. Manhattan was a blast. Though, Joey. I have to keep it in the heartland. Okay. Yeah. No, you. No, I, I think you can do wherever. Oh, we're gonna upset so many listeners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this. I, I don't going... think it's a complete. I don't think it's a complete list though until he goes to to Manhattan. So. Yeah. So. Mm. I think he has to sample all the schools. <laughs> yes, we are, we're sending Joey on a tour of all 50 states' best uh, best campuses for partying. So when I was traveling a lot for work uh, in my 20s, that was part of my goal was to go to all, at the time, 119 Division One colleges and check out their stadiums and party there, and that didn't happen. But <laughs> I have a pretty good idea of the people in each state. So The dream may not be dead yet. Yeah, yeah. When when you get too drunk to forget to go into the stadium, that's when you realize the dream was over, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, so Iowa City multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, let's wrap this thing up. Uh everybody, thank you for uh listening. Um again, let us know how we're doing. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about, like Joey's top ten party towns, I guess. Um or maybe if you don't want to hear that, we're still going to talk about it. Uh, Joey, what are the socials? <laughs> uh, Twitter and Instagram at Heartland Pulse. Hit us up on those. Uh, we post a lot of videos and stuff. As far as like smoking and other things that's going on, uh, smoking meats, that is. And uh, if you hit us up on the Facebook, we'll see you on there at the Pulse of the Heartland. All right. Thanks for listening. Uh, Look forward to next week. Keep your eye open for some more podcasts and Joey's combat sports podcast coming out too. Yep. I'll have that probably Wednesday night, uh, post it Thursday, maybe. All right. Sweet. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye.